Welcome to the 20th anniversary of the Las Vegas Book Festival. My name is Jane Ellsworth Olive, and today I'm presenting some of the poems and paintings in my book, Las Vegas, The Meadows of the Mojave Desert. My parents brought me to Las Vegas in 1941. I grew up in Vegas, worked in Vegas, and lived in Vegas for over 73 years. I graduated from John S. Park School and from Las Vegas High School, the class of 56. I also graduated from UNLV. At this time, I'd like to start with the cover of the book. This painting is called Sunrise Mountain. Now, I know there are specialists who will say it's Frenchman's Mountain, but old timers never honored that old con artist. We always called it Sunrise Mountain because the sun rose over it and the moon rose from behind it. So I will refer to this as Sunrise Mountain. I always loved this mountain. It is displaced. It belongs 50 miles to the east. Something pushed it clear out of Arizona and into the area of the Las Vegas Valley. The sedimentary labels, layers belong at the bottom of the Grand Canyon. I think of this Sentinel Mountain to me as, um, as a refugee, as an immigrant, and I'd like to share with you the poem. I love the mountain. Guardian of this valley, rooted in deep earth, it stands sentinel against dark storms and hidden dangers. Pilgrim, refugee, what Paleozoic force swept your mass upward? What tectonic convulsions dragged you here so far from your home? Were you compelled to flee? Or did you choose searing pain and rise from the depths that you might witness and know heaven's night and its bright day, the sweet scent of green meadows, the laughter and tears of children, that you might learn of life's vitality and testify of life's dream. Was it worth it? Greeting the morning sunshine, supporting nights, moon and stars, you hold up the sky, watchtower for each of us, I love this mountain. This painting is called Mojave Children. A little background on it. In the 1940s and 50s, they were developing the atomic and hydrogen bombs. They exploded 100 above ground bombs at the Nevada Proving Ground, 65 miles away from Las Vegas. It was the tradition across the country at that time that each time a bomb was dropped, sirens rang at schools and children dove under our desks and we waited a few minutes and then a bell went off and we could all get back to work in our, at our desks. But in Las Vegas, it was a little different. The bomb went off, the sirens ran, we dove under our desks, the bell rang, but then we children marched out on the playground and watched the the atomic bomb cloud pass over our heads over to Utah and Arizona and across the nation. This painting reflects that experience. There's the bomb which should be way over there off the canvas but I took artistic license and brought it on. This is the old courthouse and post office, now the mob museum. This is Vegas Vic. This is the little church I went to on 9th and Clark. These are the Huntridge homes for the division where I live. This is John S. Park School. And these are the children coming out of their classes to watch the cloud go by. This is my dog right here. My brother is calling her on the school ground. I'm the observer by the climb around I'm the one who's going to get in trouble for the dog being at school. Now that was all and well, but in the late 1970s, military folk decided to put MX missiles 
intercontinental missiles on railroad trains and run them all around the desert, Utah, Nevada, hither and thither, everywhere. Who knew when they would crash into each other, when the railroad tracks would go down? Citizens in three states just had an uproar. No more. We do not want the MX missiles. It was during that political battle that I awakened one night from a terrible dream of atomic war, and it left me so sad I could not go back to sleep. So I went out walking before dawn, sensing the quiet of the desert, the serenity of the surrounding mountains, and as I walked, I heard this poem. I went right home and typed it up. I want to add before I uh, read the poem that over time we were finding a lot of people in southern Utah and northern Arizona were becoming sick with unusual cancers, far too many for the size of the population. And so we had the sense that these above ground tests were also making people sick out here in the desert. And this added to our concern about the MX missiles, which in the end were never built. But here is the poem as I awakened that night. Mojave Children, I arose this morning from a dream of war and of sorrow. Hoping to borrow peace from movement, I walked along the darkened asphalt streets as morning's light just filled our city, surrounding it with hope, while desert mountains sheltered us from the dreams of a world unknown, comforting those who make this Mojave land our home. All's well, I called to the unease in my mind. Seek your own peace and you will find life and love and the beauty of a song for surely nothing, nothing is wrong. Yet I could not shake off the phantom feeling left from my dream of horror. And I remembered a day long ago when I crouched on a floor practicing drills for atomic war. Mojave children, fruit of the land, was it another dream, or do you remember, too, how we covered our sun-blonde heads beneath our schoolroom desks, and then, to the siren scream, marched in marshaled lines, and from our playgrounds watched the fire's cloud circle round and circle round? And should a tear appear on our golden cheeks, our teachers smiled and said, All is well. Our leaders are near, and we have nothing to fear. So quiet your mind, seek your own peace, and you will find life and love and the beauty of a song, for surely nothing, nothing is wrong. But now Mojave's children grow sick on the fire's poison, and now is our walk in this summer's day. Strangers far away dream dreams of our valleys, stashed with malignant waste and tracked with missiled dragons whose fired breath kills all life, leaving only scorched and drifting sand, blowing on lonely poisoned winds between lifeless azured mountains, alone, without the laughter of Mojave's children, who trusted in the words of strangers far away, strangers who never marched to the siren screams, nor watched the desert's pain from a playground as death's radiant dreams circled round and circled round. And standing alone in the desert's dawn, I cried out, let the stranger's dream be gone, for surely nothing, nothing can right this atomic wrong. Then knowing that no one heard, I turned and replied to the pain inside my mind, seek your own peace and you will find life and love and the beauty of a song, though it may not last for very long. Well, here is my effort to paint Mount Wilson in the very early months of my learning to paint in oils. It was a frustrating day. Let me share the poem with you. Who can paint this mountain? These rocks with hues that dart and dance before an eye grown weary with cracked and crevice shapes. These forms hidden within lines of marching time. It's too much. My mind's bedazzled. 
Grab the essence. Hope for the spirit of the place. Ah, oh, just go paint a tree. As we proceed, you may have noticed by now that each poem is accompanied by a painting, or each painting is accompanied by a poem. There are also pages in each section of the book that um, describe the background in commentaries for each of the paintings and poems so that you understand a little where they're coming from. In this case, this is the uh, Calico Hills up at Red Rock Canyon. They don't, well, the colors are a little strange, but they ran away with me. At any rate, um, my friend Kathy Bowles and I joined Friends of Red Rock, and for a few years we went there until one night there was a meeting. All the staff at the Recreation Center were so excited. This place was going to be made a national monument, and Kathy and I said, no, no, keep the solitude, keep the quiet. Don't let people come here. They'll spray paint the petroglyphs. They'll ruin everything. But we were not heard. And here is my poem, These Calico Hills. I always enjoyed these Calico Hills. I sat on old Aztec rocks and read and thought and prayed. I healed in this quiet place. One day I even saw a three-legged coyote ran right past me. People race past me now. Three busloads just stopped here. I see a hundred people disembark. I listen to them call and shout to each other. They run, they climb, they take photographs all over these Jurassic relics. Tourists are having great Calico Hills fun. I'm not. As a child, I was always concerned about the volcano that was behind Sunrise Mountain. I thought, what if it goes off? But over the years I learned it is not a volcano, it's just a cylinder cone, and the way it looks from the Boulder Highway is not the way it looks when you go around behind it or to the sides. The views become quite different. And so on one of my trips out in the desert, I took a photograph and went home and painted it. Well, that was my custom. All of these I was out in the desert with my water and a little extra food and, and my camera. All right, so the poem is Lava Butte, and this is the painting of Lava Butte. I thought I saw it rugged, tough, surrounded by badlands, uninhabitable, unvalued, unloved by all. But then I painted it, fragile, gentle, surrounded by beauty, inhabited, valued, loved by me. There's a 50 mile road between Henderson, the Lake Mead, and Overton, Nevada. There are all sorts of geologic formations along that road. So many things to see. We call the road the North Shore Road. And here is a poem and a painting about it. Again, it's the behinds part of, I think, Lava Butte. And here are some of the views that I took the photograph of as I traveled down this road. I love the North Shore Road. It holds so many surprises. I erase the dull glaze of burning dust and look beneath the desolate surface to the celebration hidden there. A turn to the right and the azure blue of water refreshes the heart and cools one's instinctive thirst in the desert. A turn to the left and an ancient cinder cone excites one's imagination with timeless thoughts of massive power rising from the burning core of the earth. Look in any direction. Follow every bend. Let your eye dart from road to distant badland view, then back again only to leap across mineral-stained mounds beside the asphalt way. This is a drive into nature's palette, a plunge into the desert's laughing place, it's a Harlequin's party. Everyone is there. Here is another view from the North Shore Road. I took it one evening and stopped because of all the erosion next to the road. It seemed quite dramatic. 
further up in the desert was a lot of steam that looked like a cloud. I finally figured out it was the steam from the Reed Garner power plant, in case you're interested. At any rate, it was twilight, and this is a poem about twilight. My feelings about twilight have changed over the decades. Perhaps they have for some of you too. Twilight. There is a softness in the twilight, not the blazing brilliance of sunlight so piercing you cannot face it as you drive. There is an easing off of the day's effort, a knowing that plans left undone wait for another day. Even as twilight gentles desert lands scarred by violent cloudbursts washing away tons of earth, so also twilight may force us to face approaching night's fears, the scars upon our hearts, remaining from our own raging sorrows, bodily pains, mistakes, transgressions, the anomalies in our lives. Now here in life's gentle twilight, I find a relaxing of the rude brilliance of ambition. I sense a certain peace in this passage, when pain is not too piercing, when mistakes and foolish remarks seem softened by perspective, when a knowing that even as another day may bring sorrow and yet more errors, it may also allow completion of one more hope or dream until there is no other day or night for me. I understand twilight. Thank you so much for sharing your time with me to present these poems and paintings. I want to thank you for doing that and I wish to thank my nephew, Eric Ellsworth, for helping me video and tape this I would also like to thank Bobby Ann Howell and all the staff that put together this huge project, the Las Vegas Book Festival. I particularly wish to thank my friend from Jonas Park Grammar School, Nancy Jeffers Cumming Schmidt, my friend who encouraged me to go forward with this. Finally, I invite you to view the other poetry uh, videos from the tapestry section of this festival. There is wonderful work here in Nevada. Once again, thank you. This little book is self-published. Uh, perhaps you can find out how to reach it through the Las Vegas Book Festival or contact my email at, at contact me at my email address, Jane E O 2016 at gmail.com. Thank you and so long.